What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob and welcome to the first installment of a new series on my channel called Jake's Movie Vlogs. And in this series I'm going to vlog some of my movie watching experiences with you guys, share some of my favorite movies of all time that are in my physical media collection, and just have a laid back video just talking about the movies that I love so much. This first movie I'm talking about was actually requested on Twitter. It was it won a Twitter poll when I came up with the idea and this is something I have been testing the waters on for quite a bit of while. I used to do commentary videos on my channel where I do extended videos where I talk about the movies in full depth while the movie's going on but those videos were very time consuming to make and I wanted to do like a more simplistic version of that. It's kind of similar if you're a fan of Filmstock's YouTube channel, Chris from Filmstock. He had a series for a while called Now Playing where he vlogged some of his experiences watching movies and talking about some of his favorite movies of all time. It's very inspired by that where I'll be sitting talking about the movie, sharing some of my favorite aspects about the movie and doing it in a fun way for you guys. I tested the waters with this back in October. I did a series called Eight Nights of Fright and I did a vlog style video while watching Tim Burton's Beetlejuice and that video went over very, very well. So that gave me some ideas to try to expand it into a full on series and here we are with Jake's movie vlogs. And so what am I doing for the first installment of this series? Well, this is actually a very fitting one. This is the first movie vlog I'm doing. And what do you know, the first one I'm doing is the one that started it all for one of my favorite animation studios of all time with Disney. We're doing Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Walt Disney's very, very first animated film. This is definitely one that I can't wait to talk about on this video. I did, this was the first celebrating Disney review I ever did on my YouTube channel, I think about two years ago now. And if you look back at that video, it's so outdated compared to the celebrating videos that I've done nowadays, which, you know, I'm very more confident in you know, my style of reviews compared to what I, what I was back in 2019. But I'm excited to share my thoughts on this movie again, do it in a vlog style video. If you're a fan of these type of videos, don't forget to click the like, the subscribe button to be notified of future videos. As I plan on doing more of these if this video does very, very well. And I'm excited to share my thoughts on this great movie. So let's put the Blu-ray in and watch the movie together. Grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's talk about Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Man, I really love this quote. My sincere appreciation to the members of my staff whose loyalty and creative endeavor made possible this production. Great quote from the one and only Walt Disney. This was his one of his passion projects for sure. He uh, risked a lot to get this movie made. Like he mortgaged his own house. He was so passionate about making the first fully animated feature here in the U.S. And a lot of people didn't take it seriously. It was dubbed... Disney's Folly by a lot of skeptics and critics. People thought at the time, if you watch a feature length animated cartoon, it'll blind your eyes because of the bright colors. Man, were they proven wrong. Thanks to the success of this wonderful, wonderful film. Part of the reason I think this movie was such a groundbreaking game change, see the camera zooming like that, that was a breakthrough technology in the field of animation, the multiplane, which is where the camera can make zooming shots like that and feel very cinematic. People never really saw that in anything animated 
And I think that was part of the reason why this was such a success for Disney because of the groundbreaking technologies. All right, we're at our first glimpse of Snow White as a character, and I guess this is technically the first I Want song. Yeah, I can definitely see something like I'm Wishing being the inspiration for some of the great Disney songs to come, especially the Alan Menken stuff. Still on the I'm Wishing song, a lot of people complain about Snow White's singing voice, uh, how it's too high pitched, and a lot of people compare it to like Betty Boop style singing. I know that was a popular singing style, especially in the 30s. I've never been too bothered by her singing. I think it actually sounds quite sweet, if I'm being honest. Now, the sound is kind of dated, but you know, I take it for what it is. This came out back in 1937, and I still think the singing's pretty good. I've always been a fan of her singing voice. It's very sweet. Yeah, I will say the prince is kind of an underdeveloped character. Uh, I know, I think he was supposed to have a larger role originally. I think he was supposed to have been like captured by the queen or something, which prevented him from, you know, stopping Snow White from eating the apple or something like that. But I think his character was reduced because he was hard to animate at the time. So that explains why his character is so underdeveloped and kind of there. I will say, though, the song he's singing, one song, is severely underrated. I've always been a fan of that song. It's kind of a sweet love song, honestly, and it compliments Cinderella's I Want so Not Cinderella, but Snow White's I Want song very, very well. We might do a vlog video on Cinderella eventually, but... I do really like Snow White. I think I like this one more than Cinderella, if I'm being honest. We're getting to the part of the movie where Snow White is in the scary forest. This scene used to scare the crap out of me as a kid. I mean, some of the imagery was just so haunting, especially, I think I was like maybe four or five when I first saw the film. It is insane some of the details Disney put into this scene. And I'm a big fan of the overall atmosphere of the film. It's kind of crazy how it's, uh, it starts out as like a very creepy, scary forest. And it's just, you know, lovable animated creatures that, you know, are somehow scared Snow White somehow. It's kind of crazy how it builds up. Let's take a look. Man, just look at the detail on all this stuff. So we're getting to the Whistle While You Work musical number when uh, Snow White and all the animals are cleaning up the cottage for what she assumed to be seven unchided children. We come to find out they're actually the seven dwarves. And... I've seen this been criticized in a more modern lens. Like, if people are like, oh man, this movie is sexist because Snow White is her first intention when seeing a dirty house is clean. I don't really see how that's a problem, if I'm being honest. she's do One, she's doing a good deed, for one thing, and her biggest virtue is kindness and compassion. So, And also, she thought they were untidy children with no mother. I think anybody in that situation, especially, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, anybody that has a good heart, if they were in that situation, I don't care who you are, I think you'd want to make a good, do a good makeover if you believe that if you see a house where you feel like it's run by children with no mother or father or whatever. Because you want the best for whoever that is. So that controversy, I think, is a little unwarranted, personally. Now, I get the criticism that Snow White is a quote-unquote weak protagonist. She's definitely not as, like, strong-minded, I guess, compared to some of the more modern Disney princesses, especially if you compare it to, like, Anna or Nelsa from Frozen or Moana compared to those characters. But gotta remember this is also the first Disney film and this came out back in 1937 there was different norms and expectations back then and you know what I'm still fine with the movie that we got this was definitely this was definitely a movie 
that was ahead of its time as far as, you know, pioneering the art of animation. You gotta think of it this way. Without Snow White, you wouldn't have Frozen or Beauty and the Beast or Moana. Any Disney film that has come since. Or any other animation studio in that matter. We wouldn't even have Pixar or DreamWorks or Illumination or Blue Sky. Well, Blue Sky just recently shut down, sadly. Rest in peace to Blue Sky. But you get what I mean. Just... The art of animation, the medium of animation, would not be what it is today without Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And I think this movie needs all the love and respect in the world. Even though, yeah, you can complain about how dated, I guess, it is in some regards. And I'm not saying that Snow White is the best character or anything like that. She's not one of my absolute favorite Disney princesses. She's definitely, my big issue with her is that she is easily gullible. Even though she is very kind and compassionate towards others. I really love that virtue in her character. But I feel like this movie needs all the respect in the world for being the first of its kind. And that's why I, I love Snow White so much. And the story is still really great. I still really love the story. It's one of my absolute favorite classic Disney movies, if I'm being honest. Uh, I really love like the passion and hard work Walt and the crew put into making this movie so special. And it's crazy how well like the animation still holds up, especially for a movie this old, too. I really love just all the fine details of this movie. It's such a fantastic work of art. I Hey ho, hey ho, it's home from work we go. Yes, easily the most iconic song of the whole movie. I love Hi Ho, it's so singable. I have a Disney playlist on Spotify where I put like every single Disney song from Disney soundtracks on Spotify. I created my own playlist of that. And it is so awesome whenever I come home from work and Hi Ho plays. It is such a blast. I love the song so much. It is such an earworm. And some of the most iconic shots of the movie, I think, are in the high ho scene. Like, look at some of these shots. Like, just look at this. Look at this. Yep, there's them walking on the log. That's such an iconic shot. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. And then that beautiful waterfall. Looks almost like the one in The Lion King, if I'm being honest. One of the biggest complaints I've heard on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is that it's hard remembering all the dwarves' names. Well, here you go. Snow White's gonna name it for you. Doc? Happy. Sneezy. <laughs> Did you get that? So let me see if I can name all seven of the dwarves now. Let's see. We got Doc. Grumpy, Sneezy, Sleepy, Happy, Bashful, and Sneezy. Did I get them? Doc, Happy, Grumpy, Sneezy, Sleepy, Bashful, and Happy. I think I got all seven. Let me know down in the comments below if you can name all seven of the dwarves without having to look them up. It is kind of hard because the dwarves are named after different personalities. But that's what makes the dwarves so fun. I think my two favorites are actually Grumpy and Doc. No, not Doc. Uh, Grumpy and Dopey are my favorites. Doc is up there too. I love his speech impediment. It's hilarious. Those are probably my top three, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, I always love that gag with the music and the noses popping up like that. Now, interesting story. Uh, to help boost morale in the Disney company because, you know, so much stakes was riding high on the success of Snow White. Walt Disney encouraged the animators to put as many cartoon gags as possible to help boost the morale and help, uh, you know, give them confidence in their movies. So that's why you see a lot of these slapsticky cartoon gags that you would see on a lot of, like, the classic Mickey Mouse cartoons and the Silly Symphonies all throughout Snow White, some of like some of the animal gags and the dwarf gags, other stuff like that all throughout the film. You see a lot of it during the Whistle While You Work sequence and some of the 
dwarf slapstick comedy throughout. There's just so many funny gags in this film that do get a good laugh out of me, especially someone who's a fan of those old school classic cartoons. So we got an entire song about the dwarves washing their hands and their faces. Man, Disney, I'm surprised you didn't revive this song during like the worst of the COVID pandemic to encourage people to wash their hands. That would have been quite genius, honestly. Disney, you missed opportunity there. Favorite cartoon gag in this entire movie coming up that involves Grumpy and his hesitation of washing his hands because of how grumpy he is. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of brutal here. The queen is about to turn into the old hag. For some reason, this scene didn't scare me as much as the forest, but man, the atmosphere is still pretty effective. It's almost like you're watching a body horror film. Let's let's watch. This is crazy. Let's let's look at this. Again, the atmosphere is just so good. Is this something you don't expect to see in an animated film aimed at younger kids? This is insane. My boys. <laughs> So, uh, funny story about that. So the actress who voiced the queen, because she did the voice for both the queen and her d hag disguise, and it blew the animators and Walt Disney away on how she was able to sound so evil when she turned to the hag. And she was asked, oh, how did you talk like that? And you're like, oh, I took my fake teeth out. <laughs> Well, that's one way to do it. So this dance moves that Snow White is doing during this party scene, Disney loved recycling animation over the years and a lot of the, a lot of the animation in this sequence was like recycled infamously in Robin Hood, which definitely had some cheaper animation techniques because of a different scenario. I think a lot of Disney was cutting corners after Walt Disney's death. It'd be interesting how Walt Disney would have felt about that. That would have been interesting. Like, oh, why are you recycling my animation? But you know what? I still enjoy Robin Hood as a movie, but just the recycled animation could be a bit too much. It is quite interesting seeing how much Disney recycled their animation over the years, and they're still doing it today. Sometimes it's done in the cleverest of ways. Other times it's done in probably the cheap and laziest of ways when it's that noticeable and I think Robin Hood was definitely one of those cases although I still enjoy Robin Hood as a whole that is a great movie especially for my childhood I love seeing that film as a kid it was one of the first Disney movies I ever watched so was Snow White in that movie I think for me it's just gotten better with time for me I did a video a while back called lessons animation taught us and I did a whole video on the Disney princesses as a whole how as a kid, I kind of dismissed a lot of the Disney princess films because of my perceived notions of them being girly films as a kid. And I did a whole video about how some of the films helped overcome some of my childish prejudices, if you will, I guess, on some of these films. Like the three that sealed the deal for me that helped change my perspective on that attitude as a kid were Beauty and the Beast, Mulan, and The Little Mermaid, which I loved those films as a kid. But I didn't get into Snow White that much as a kid, even though I watched it a lot as a kid. My sister obviously being a big fan of the Disney Princess films. Like we watched Snow White a lot as a kid and Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, but I didn't get into those a lot as a kid because of my childish notions about these films. Obviously, all three of those movies, while maybe not my personal favorites, like I still prefer Beauty and the Beast and The Little Mermaid, I think. 
Snow White is one that's gotten higher on my ranking nowadays because of my respect for the art form of animation. Even though Snow White, I don't love her as much as a character compared to Belle or Ariel or even Mulan in that matter. I still really, really love and respect the craft of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's mainly up there because it was the first. I love Walt Disney's dedication in building his studio, help form animation as an art form to where it is today, and just how it put Disney on the map, especially as far as telling these fairy tale stories that they're still doing very, very well today and each generation. Starting with Snow White, and then we got Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty, and then eventually with The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, eventually The Princess and the Frog, Tangled, Moana, Frozen. All great fairy tale stories with iconic Disney princesses. I love almost all the movies, and Snow White is definitely one of them. It's weird I'm talking during this, during the Someday My Prince Will Come number, that's the standout song of the whole movie. Again, another I Want song. It's crazy Snow White had two I Want songs. First I'm Wishing and now Someday My Prince Will Come. It's usually one, but they're both really, really great songs. I do really like both the songs. And again, I'm a fan of Snow White's singing voice. As dated and high-pitched and Betty Boopish that it sounds, I still really like the voice. I think it's a sweet voice. I think on a different note since Disney loves doing the live action remakes nowadays I think I remember reading one time that Mark Webb might direct a live action version of Snow White for Disney I don't know if I'm open to that idea or not I'm very hit and miss on the live action remake as a whole and I've been kind of burned out on them in more recent years especially after how divisive some of the recent ones have been like The Lion King and Aladdin and Mulan, which I still haven't seen, but Mark Webb doing Snow White, I think might have potential, especially for one aspect. If Mark Webb is able to improve the relationship between Snow White and the Prince, I think it'll be something. I said earlier in the video, the Prince, I thought was a very underdeveloped character. And I think if Mark Webb gets his hands on retelling this story, for a new generation and does it very well, I think that aspect of the film is going to be fantastic. Because if you know Mark Webb, he's known for telling very compelling romance stories. My favorite rom-com of all time is 500 Days of Summer. And he also directed the Amazing Spider-Man films. And say what you will about those films, they're not the best movies by any means. And they're far from excellent cinema, but... The best aspect in both movies is the relationship between Peter and Gwen because of his amazing knack at telling relatable romance stories. And I think if he does that with Snow White, I think it'll be a fantastic retelling. Even though I'm kind of hit and miss on live action remakes, remakes as a whole, I'm okay with them if they're done really well. Like, my favorite ones are to date are like the live action Cinderella and Christopher Robin and John Favreau's The Jungle Book. I think those were done very well. My favorite ones are the ones that I think respect and cherish the original animated classics while also telling a unique spin on it. And those are the ones I tend to enjoy the most. And I'm hoping if Mark Webb's Snow White gets made, I'm hoping it'll be on the positive side instead of the more negative side of some of the live action remakes. Again, I think the only like real issue I have with Snow White as a character is that she is easily gullible. Like the dwarves tell her, don't let any strangers in the house. And the hag or the queen, a very obvious bad guy, she's willing to let her in because, you know, she offers her an apple and successfully tricks Snow White into ha letting her in the house because of her quote-unquote poor heart. Uh, that part of the movie, it, it's very nitpicky. I think that's the only aspect of her character that bothers me, but I mean, 
it's still part of the story. I mean, I love the queen as a character. is one of my favorite classic Disney villains. And the poison apple is such an iconic image for the movie. Even with that nitpick against Snow White, I still stand by that Snow White is a solid character. I think because she does have good virtues overall, especially kindness and compassion. I like that even though she was a little disappointed at first that the dwarves were not children, I like that she still treats them as like she's a motherly figure to the dwarves. And I thought that was a good virtue to have. And I like the relationship that she has with the dwarves even after she finds out who the characters actually are. And, you know, the dwarves, you know, allowing her to stay to protect her from the queen trying to kill her. I think that dynamic is done very well. And it's a very sweet relationship to have. I really enjoy the dynamic between those characters. And I think overall Snow White is a very good character. I think she pales in comparison to the modern Disney princesses who have those great traits while also, I think, being stronger minded, I guess. Not that... So White is a weak character by any means, but I do think she is easily gullible and that's the weakest part of her character. But I respect her kindness and compassion towards others and that's why I deeply respect Snow White as a character so much. So Snow White just ate the poison apple and as sad as it is, the scene that plays after that with the dwarves chasing the queen down it's almost like you're watching an exciting action movie. It's very thrilling to watch. I definitely enjoy the suspense and the music that builds from this. And then just the great atmosphere with the rain coming down as soon as Snow White technically dies from the apple, eating the apple. It's just, oh, this is such a thrilling sequence. And then the way the queen goes out is just brutal. I'm going to show you in a minute. But, man... The first of many brutal Disney villain deaths. We haven't had a brutal Disney villain death in a while. They need to come back. Some of the recent villains have been more subversive and they're just not really as menacing as some of the villains we've had in the past. But I love what's coming up with the queen. Let's, I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so she's about to crush the dwarves, right? Lightning strikes, she falls off the cliff and then it's implied, does the boulder crush her? I mean, wow, that's just messed up. And then the vultures are like, ooh, I'm gonna, we got some dinner tonight. And then the dwarves are just like, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, so she gets crushed by a boulder and she's going to be eaten alive by the vultures. Or eaten what's left of her. Ah, the first feels moment in a Disney movie. Snow White's, oh, no, not grumpy. Oh, this is almost like you're at a wake. Uh, this is such a sad scene of the movie. I, I'm sure I, I can only imagine what audiences felt in 1937 when they first saw this scene, especially the critics who were skeptical of the idea of a feature length animated cartoon. The fact that this movie moved so many people back in the day. I remember I read during the world premiere of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, this movie got a standing ovation from critics and celebrities alike. And some of the celebrities that were in attendance during the premiere come to find out were Shirley Temple and Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin even said that Snow White was one of his favorite movies of all time. So if the greatest classic comedian of all time, Charlie Chaplin, said Snow White is a masterpiece, then. Bravo Disney for making something special. I criticize the prince all I want, but I always get goosebumps during this part. I honestly do. This movie does a great job at playing with the emotions. The fact that, you know, this you can laugh, you can cry, you can feel relieved when uh, the prince shows up and breaks the spell. And, you know, we get the happily ever after ending. This is done so, so well. And I can forgive the prince for being underdeveloped because this is such an underrated song, too. The Kiss of Life. And happily ever after. Here we go. Woohoo!
and they lived happily ever after. And that wraps up my first ever Jake's movie vlog. Talking about Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I just finished the movie and I still really love it. I've talked about this movie enough. A fantastic animated classic. The one that started it all for Disney Animation. They have left a vast great impact on animation as a whole. Definitely for the better. Again, without Snow White, we wouldn't have all the great Disney films that have come since. We wouldn't have had Pixar. We wouldn't have had DreamWorks. We wouldn't have had Studio Ghibli. We wouldn't have Laika. Animation would not be where it is today without Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I think this movie still holds up beautifully. It's one of my favorite classic Disney films. It still holds up remarkably well. The animation is still beautiful. The songs are still top notch. I enjoy the characters. Snow White, I nitpick her to death, but she's still a great character in her own right. The Seven Dwarves are all so entertaining and are the scene stealers of the entire film. My favorites are Grumpy, Doc, and Dopey, but all the other dwarves are great as well. The Queen was such a great classic villain and still one of my favorites to this day. A lot of iconic moments in this film. The Queen and the Poison Apple. All that stuff is great. The story is done very well. I can nitpick certain aspects, yes, with the relationship between Snow White and the Prince. That's a little underdeveloped. And then Snow White can be easily manipulated. That's like the weakest aspect of her character. And it does kind of annoy me a little bit. But overall, I still really, really love this movie. It gets a 5 out of 5 stars for me, and I give it a 96 out of 100 on the 100 point scale. Such a fantastic Disney movie, and where would we be today in the world of film without Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? I am a sucker for animated films. I've always loved animation as a medium, especially now more than ever, with all the many great animation studios making remarkable works of art. Animation is still an undervalued medium from a lot of people. And I'm glad that there's great animators and great directors and great studios that have worked very hard and tireless, tirelessly to make fantastic works of art from the people like me and so many others who appreciate these movies the most. I love Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's any other movies you'd like me to tackle in this Jake's Movie Vlog series, let me know down in the comments below. It's mainly on movies that I own physically on physical media. So if you want to look at like some of my haul videos or complete collection videos, you can see all the movies that I own and have some ideas. I'll leave links in the description below or an iCard will pop up on my playlist of all those videos if to give me some ideas. I'll also leave more polls on Twitter to help decide other vlog videos I should do in this series. The next one I'm gonna do will actually tie into Emily Blunt birthday month. I'm not gonna reveal it just yet. You're just gonna have to find out when the video drops. But I am gonna do another movie that I did previously on Celebrating Disney, that's The Hint. Starring Emily Blunt. The Hint is an iconic follow-up to an iconic Disney film that Emily Blunt took the reins in. That's the hint I'm going to make. You'll have to find out for yourselves which one I'm going to do. But I'm excited to share that video too because I am a fan of Emily Blunt as an actress. And I do enjoy the movie that she starred in that I'll be doing next time in the series. But if you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on Snow White as a whole. Do you love the film? Do you hate the film? Are you mixed on the film? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, I usually do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. 
God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!